Welcome to a demo of the multi-threaded manager editor tool in runtime libraries. This and other tools from Andrew on Tech can be found in the Unity Asset Store. There's a link in the description. First, a quick overview of what the multi-threaded manager is and why you would want to integrate it into your project. Essentially, the multi-threaded manager helps in the creation process of multi-threaded jobs that can be used within a Unity project. From a high level, there are two main benefits of multi-threading in Unity. The ability to run code on a background thread, asynchronously from the Unity main thread, and to run multiple threads in parallel in order to achieve better CPU utilization and thus better performant code. Now that we are familiar with the basics, let's take a look at a demonstration of the code generated by a multi-threaded manager editor tool. So we're going to open up a build here. All right. So this is code generated by the multi-threaded manager tool that effectively allows me to uh, utilize multi-threading to solve uh, or to run some code. So this cube that you see spinning here, um, effectively I have some methods uh, or one method in particular that will find what cube this spinning cube is closest to in this array of cubes behind it. Now, that's not that slow of a task. So in order to really beef up how slow it is, um, I'm doing that 10,000 times. So when I click find, I'm finding the closest cube to this cube 10,000 times. So first what I want to do is I want to show um, how slow it is and what happens when you just do it on the Unity main thread. So this is not using uh, multi-threaded code at all. This is just doing it in the exact same way that if you just opened a Unity project, threw it in a start or an update or on a button press, what would happen? Um, so notice there's also some other information here, such as frames per second, and this time to complete is how long in milliseconds it takes to find it 10,000 times, which you'll see that update after I click. So I click, so you'll notice, look, the cube no longer follows the mouse, it's no longer spinning, our frame rate was dipping, and things were happening. So uh, it took roughly 3, uh, 3,825 milliseconds, or 3.8 seconds, to find um, which cube was closest 10,000 times. Um, but the big thing was that you noticed that the cube no longer followed the mouse and also that the cube stopped spinning. And this is because since I was using the Unity main thread, which is also the render thread in Unity, to find this um, calculation, what ended up happening was it had to wait before it could update the UI and the visuals um, until the calculation was completed. So one of the main things that you can do with multi-threading is dispatch this job onto a background thread. So what that allows you to do is it allows you to Unity and you to update things like UI and visuals, um, input, get input, all without blocking, thus allowing you to uh, kind of do some fun stuff. So uh, just ignore this optimized thread count for now. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of that in a second. But let's take a look at what happens when I find with multi-threading, in this case using a background thread. So again, same calculation is happening, but as you notice, the cube doesn't stop spinning, and it also continues to follow my mouse. Um, we got almost no, maybe a little bit of frame rate drop, not a big deal. Now, the big thing is, is notice that it actually took a, a decent amount slower time, 5.5 seconds instead of 3.8 seconds, to calculate this. And this is just due to the fact that dispatching something to the background thread and then returning it back to the Unity main thread takes time. Um, so there is a little bit of a hit there. Uh, when doing it that way. But depending on what you're doing in the background, that might not be a big deal. And also, once we use optimized threading here in a second, I will show you how you can, you know, circumvent that. So again, notice that uh, that I turned optimized threading on. So I'm working on a 4770K CPU, which has four cores and eight threads. So for me, it's really uh, useful to uh, do optimized threading, which is going to split the workload over several threads, however many I, um, I input here. So again, we're doing 10,000 calculations. So now these 10,000 calculations are gonna be done over two threads. So let's notice what happens when I do that. So number one, notice the frame rate barely drops. Um, also, we have no issues with input during that time. There's no blocking on the ma uh, main thread. But notice our time now went from, uh, I believe 5.5 seconds before to three seconds, which is actually faster than it was running on the main thread. Now, if we go and utilize completely what this CPU can do, so let's let's bump this up to six threads. So again, this is gonna be splitting the workload, so those 10,000 calculations over six threads. So um, let's see what happens. So it's finding it and, oh, oops. Well, 
I'll find it here in a second. So I actually found this without uh, optimized threading on. So that was my bad. Let's run it again with optimized threading on. So, do, do, do. so you notice 1.3 seconds it took. So almost no frame rate drop, a little bit of frame rate drop, but again, when you're at 800 frames per second, it's not much of a big deal, but you'll notice 1.3 seconds to complete that. Now, again, let's find it without multi-threading. Not only does it block, but how long does it take? 3.9 seconds versus, again, 1.2 seconds. And this is just due to the fact that when you're using optimized threading, as I'm calling here, or parallel threading, um, what that does is allows you to do multiple chunks of work on separate threads at the same time and then bring them back later. So that's some stuff that the multi-threaded manager editor tool and runtime libraries can do for you. Um, now, now that we've seen, you know, what it can do, the question is, okay, how did we get here? How hard is it to implement something like this? Okay, so let's take a jump back over here to Unity. Um, and you can see this is the, uh, the project that we were just running. Literally, I made a build uh, five seconds before I started recording this video with this project. Um, so let's look at the process of going through and generating a multi-threaded method and using it. So first, I'm going to open up the multi-threaded manager, which is an editor window that um, can be launched from window uh, multi-thread manager it's that easy and then we get a couple options so one option we can do is delete a method so you'll notice find closest cube that was the method that we were using in the demo so if we wanted to delete it we could delete it right here um, but we're actually going to create a new method here and show uh, how to use it so the first thing you got to do um, is hit create method which opens up this menu so a couple things now like uh, let's say uh, we wanted to create a method that added two values okay so pretty much what we're going to end up doing here is generating code that allows you to run this on a background thread or possible multiple background threads. So the tool needs some information. So such as what do you want to name the method? So again, you just have to name it something valid. Uh, what is the return type? So in this case, we want to add two ints together. So the return type is going to be an int. And then we add whatever parameters we want. So in this case, we want to add two parameters, both being ints. And we're going to call that int A and int B. So those are the two parameters that our method requires. Now, at this point, you'll notice you again, you can't actually create the method yet. Uh, it says disable, please fill in a method name, method body. So we're missing a method body. So at this point, you would type in code exactly the same way that you would if you were typing in Visual Studio or Mono Develop or any other code editor that you may use. The process that I usually do is write the code first, make sure it works, and then input it here later. Um, just that way you can get a little more, uh, it's a little more friendly to do it, but in this case, it's something simple. So I'm just going to return a plus B. So very simple add method. Um, at this point I will hit create and you'll see some things are happening. Code is compiling the tool lets you know it's compiling the code. Okay. And now that the code is compiled, what you'll notice is over in your multi-threaded manager folder here in the project under generated code, we now have this multi-threaded job add. So we can go ahead and open this. So what the tool did is it actually added this method for us. So all of these things are generated based on what you typed into the tool. So now the question is, how do we actually use that add method that we added? Um, so what we want to first do is we want to create some code that can utilize that add method. So we'll call this use add method. Okay, so we added that. Um, now what we want to do is we want to add that to our demo so that way we can see it in action. So we'll use add method there. And then um, now that we are editing it, let's just put some code in a start that calls this. So first thing we want to do is we need to define um, a callback method for our background thread to communicate back to the Unity main thread with. So we're going to create a method here. I'm just going to call this add method callback. And remember before we selected that we were returning an int. So we're going to do int value. So our return value from our method, oops, so that's going to be void, no problem. Um, our return value from our method is going to be piped into here. But before we actually get to our return, we first need to call the method. So we're going to do that here in our start. So with every method that's generated by the multi-threaded manager, they're all going to be added as a request in the multi-threaded request handler so all of the uh, code that is generated or all the methods that you generate through the tool will automatically get added to this so um, you can see our find closest cube which was what we were using in the demo build and then now our request add that we just added 
So the first thing that it requires in here is, <clears throat> excuse me, um, is the callback. So we want to do our add method callback. Then we want to add what variables we care about. So in our case, we care about one and two. So what's also should be noted here is this, uh, this does return a thread. So if you ever want to get information about the thread that's being spawned in the background, things like, is it done running, um, uh, information about it, you can find it here. So to check our value, we will just add a print here. So print value, and this should log it to the console. Let's go back to Unity. Let's let our code compile. Okay, looks like it compiled. Um, so we can see our useAd method is here. So nothing in the console. Let's hit play. And boom, we can see three. So one plus two, three. Um, so yeah, so using, uh, using this tool and good coding practices can make a huge difference in the performance of your app. If you have any comments or concerns, feel free to email me. My address is in the description. Also, links to demo builds for Windows, OS X, and Android can also be found in the description. Feel free to try out the demo on your own system to see the results firsthand. iOS is also supported, but distribution is more difficult, therefore no build will be available. Sorry for this inconvenience.